That's also about John Coltrane. So, yeah. Okay, see, and that went way over my head. <laughs> <laughs> just a, just a, that went way. It's just, just another album, just another album, you know. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bob Marley, I mean, uh, Bob Dylan once said that Smokey Robinson was uh, the greatest living the poet in America at that time. Well, you know, uh, People think of Smokey Robinson, you know, as just a singer. Mm -hmm. But but if you listen to the lyrics of like the love I saw in you was just a mirage, just like a, a, a desert shows a thirsty man, a green oasis where there's only sand, mm -hmm. the love I saw in you was just a mirage, that's definitely the relationship that black people have to America, it's a mirage. You know, because it, it is a desert, it ain't no green oasis. So where are some of the places that you've been out of this country? I hate to admit it, but I've only been to Canada. I've been to Canada, been to Cuba, been to Jamaica, been to Grenada, been to Venezuela, uh, been to Puerto Rico, been to Lebanon, been to France, England, uh, Syria, uh, the Soviet Union, Poland, Germany. I mean, you know. Dang. I mean, 77, I should have gone somewhere. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, okay, you're making me feel bad because I'm 58. And like I said, I've only been to Canada, so I guess I better. Uh, I've been all over this country, but, uh, you know, never to, um, you know, some of the places that you've been to. So, um, well, what are some of your... Um, Favorite records to sell? What is which music? Um, the ones that bring the most money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't. Uh, if you, if you in, if you in the business of selling anything, you can't love it more than you love what it is that the commerce that you're in. I mean, the worst. I mean, if you own a bar, you shouldn't drink. Cause you drink up your profit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, if a record, if a record is a two thousand dollar record, I can't afford to keep a two thousand dollar record. Don't make any sense. Cause any record that's out is available somewhere. The Japanese have could almost reproduce almost every jazz record on vinyl and CD. When you say reproduce, what do you mean? They reissued it. You know, a, a record is like a book. Mm -hmm. You have a first, a first edition, a second edition, different printings. Well, you have a first edition of a record. That a first edition of a record is more valuable than a reissue. Uh, you know, the first issue of uh, John Coltrane's uh, Blue Train could go for two thousand dollars, but you can get a reissue for ten. Ten dollars or ten thousand? Ten dollars. Okay. Yeah, it's a reissue, you know. So collectors collect things because they're special. I mean, you know, it's like um, I have first edition books mm -hmm. by by writers, mostly black writers, mm -hmm. and um, because that's my passion. Records are not my passion. Books are. Oh, books. Yeah. See, I didn't know. Now, what are some of the books that you have? Um, well, I don't want to say that. You know, people start climbing in my window. <laughs> I don't have nothing up in here. <laughs> I see this uh, writings and drawings by Bob Dylan. I, I noticed you mentioned him earlier. Uh, yeah. You know, it's you have a diverse collection of stuff. Well, you know... You know, life is, uh, the world is a quilt, and uh, it's made up of all different kind of people, um, um, and beautiful people, there are beautiful people in this world, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, as in the Donald, there's some ugly ones too, mm. you know, and um, so, um, I, you know, I see myself as a citizen of the world, you know, um, I try and understand where people are coming from wherever I go, mm -hmm. you know, and this country 
particularly the rich people in this country, they encourage, they encourage not diversity, but divisiveness. Mm -hmm. They want the Latinos and black people fighting each other. They want the poor working class whites who are in the same position as black people are in, as Hispanics are in, mm -hmm. they're in the same position as anybody in who's being discriminated against, except they don't know it. That's interesting because those same poor whites, like those Appalachian whites, they always vote against their own interests. You exactly. Know. That's how I was able to win 2,000 votes in a 99% white county because that's exactly what I told them. I said, if you like what I say, you should vote for me. And if you don't, you shouldn't vote for me. And I said, it's a fool that puts his, his prejudice over his interests. I mean, they can understand it when you break it down to them. You know, you think you're going to get anything from Donald Trump, you can forget that, buddy. He gonna make you feel good for a minute, but you can't take that feeling to Safeway and Giant and Kroger's. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it does seem like uh, Trump so those people are, uh, what do you want to call it? Sold him some swampland or, you know, sold him a bridge that he didn't own. That's pretty interesting. That is pretty, pretty interesting. Well, it'll be, uh, all, it'll be all right. So what do you like to read? I mean, I know you, you don't want to say what books you have here, but, you know, for your own personal reading, what's your, uh, you know? Well, you know, I read uh, the New York Times, the Financial Times every day. Um, this summer I read uh, A Wild and Blatant Truth, which is a book uh, about Charles Law, a tennis saxophone player. I read mm -hmm. another book, Whisper Not, tennis saxophone player Benny Ghost. And then I read another book by Professor of Physics called Jazz and Physics. I mean, I read a lot of different things, you know. The thing is, is to try and understand the world in which you live in, you know, and so you gotta, you gotta, it's like music, you know, I'm not, I can't claim to know uh, anything about hip-hop deep, deeply, but I know what I like, I mean, I was the first person to interview Chuck D in D.C., mm. uh, Public Enemy, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I got my favorites, you know, uh, I mean, I like LL Cool J's Around the World, Around the Way Girl, right, right, you know, No Diggity, I like a tribe called Quest, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Jungle Brothers, you know, I mean, that, you know, uh, so, you know, you got to stay, you got to stay up, you know, as they say, stay woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned Chuck D because Chuck D actually helped me out uh, a bunch of years ago. Um, he, he was, there was a live concert at BET he was doing in Indianapolis. Uh, for Circle City Classic and Chuck D had to film some uh, PSAs backstage and uh, I had actually met him a couple of weeks ago at a celebrity basketball game and we just kind of hit it off, you know, our brothers meet and, you know, so he was filming these PSAs and he kept pulling me in front of the camera with him. So I'm standing there, he's like, I'm Chuck D and this is Mike Patton and I'm blown away. But anyway, because of that, uh, Kenny Babyface Edmonds and his people hired me the next day to shoot a, a birthday party, a appreciation party for a group called A Few Good Men, I think it was. And um, Beyonce, Destiny's Child, they were there, but they weren't Destiny's Child at the time. They were called The Dawes. And so I do have some original pictures of them. I'm just thinking, had I known then what I know now, man, I would have shot a zillion pictures of those girls. That's interesting. They just had on the news today uh, some film footage of Beyonce when she was young. Mm -hmm. And they talk about it might go for four million dollars. <laughs> so, uh oh, so, let me go know, find my pictures. We all, we all <laughs> have our near misses. When I was running for, for Congress in Cincinnati, Gil Scott Heron did a uh, fundraiser for me. Mm -hmm. And so we needed some instruments, and it was a band that was playing in the club on Montgomery Road. And they said they was looking for a manager. So I said, well, you know. Uh, uh, when I finish this, you know, we can talk. So I'm flying back to Cincinnati months later, and Dick Griffin, 
Dick Griffey, who had a record label called Solar Records. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was flying to Cincinnati, and we was on the plane. I said, Dick, what you going to Cincinnati for? He said, I'm going to sign up two groups. One was The Deal, which was what Baby Baby Face was Baby Face and The Deal. And the other one was uh, Midnight Star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I said, well, that was, uh, I could have, you know, you always get these things, but you miss it. You yeah. Know? So, so is Midnight Star, was that the group that wanted you to manage them, or was no, it? No, it was The Deal. The Deal. Man, but I didn't never know who The Deal was. Or right. Baby well, see, Face Edmonds. Actually, The Deal did a reunion concert in Indianapolis about 15 years ago. Right. And they allowed me to come back to the hotel room with them to do a bunch of pictures of them. They didn't want to do it, which I'm glad they didn't. We didn't do it in public. You know, so Babyface, uh, Babyface has been very instrumental in helping me in my career also. So I have some exclusive stuff of him and his family. Um, now, is he, he from Cincinnati, Indianapolis? He's from Indianapolis. Right. But a portion of the highway in Indianapolis is named Kenneth Babyface Edmonds on 65 North. And so the day that they did all that with the governor and stuff, I was assigned to him as his photographer that day. So I was able to be in some areas that the public and other media weren't allowed to be in to get some, you know, really good intimate stuff of him and his mom who's now passed away. So, you know, have some pretty good stuff. But, you know, that's a, a crazy coincidence, that connection of Chuck D and, and you and me, you know. Right, right, right. Well, you know. Certain people run in the same circle, so they're bound to meet. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people don't know. See, y'all who's listening.